Hey guys, today we're gonna work with watercolors, but instead of just making a painting, we're going to look at the science behind watercolor. Ready? Go get your watercolor set. The first thing we're gonna learn today is what happens to watercolor paint when it touches wet paper versus dry paper. We have here a piece of paper. This is called a watercolor paper. We are going to wet the paper up here on top with water. And we're gonna leave area down here dry. And we're gonna see what happens when you add color. Now, my colors right now are asleep. So I need to bring water and drip water into the color. And then I'm going to stir. And now the water and the color are being mixed. And the color is woken up. Now I'm gonna Paint with this on a wet piece of paper and the color spreads. I'm gonna do the same thing on down here and notice the color is very contained where I painted it and it doesn't go anywhere else. Next, we're gonna learn about the brush size and pressure and how they help us make the marks that we want to make on our paintings. Next, I want you to notice these are all watercolor brushes and they have numbers on the sides. The numbers correspond to how thick the barrel of holding all the hairs are. Now obviously the number six looks like will make um, the brushes much much thicker and here these are go from six, five, four, three, two, one, then zero. Then there's a double zero and a triple zero. So let's compare six and triple zero. Obviously these two brushes are gonna make very different marks. Let's try them. And I'm going to make a line using lots of pressure. And now I'm gonna use the triple zero brush to do the same thing. I'm gonna use a lot of pressure to make a line. And obviously the line is much thinner. Um, now I'm gonna purposely use the same brush and use it with very little pressure. I'm gonna use triple zero brush and use very little pressure. So it's a slightly bit thinner. And then I'm gonna use the uh, number six brush and also use very little pressure. Make another line, there we go. So the wonderful thing about pressure is that you can um, manipulate how thick the lines are in your painting by using and adjusting your pressure. So here I can make a super thick line by at pressing really hard on my brush. And the same brush can make a super thin line, almost like a triple zero brush. So here's that same brush with very little pressure. This is number six, amazing. All right, so pressure has a lot of importance in watercolor painting. Watercolors are not that forgiving. If you make a mistake with watercolors, it's almost impossible to erase them. This is not the case with other kinds of paints where you can easily just paint over the paper and then come back later and paint over it and no one will ever know. So in watercolors, we have special supplies that we use to help us maintain some areas, uh, the color of the paper and not have it absorb the colors that we put on the paper. So let's go and see what they are. Next, we're gonna talk about masking. These are uh, different supplies you might use to, to help you um, block off an area of your painting that you don't want to absorb the paint. 
We're gonna try them all out today. Let's go. Okay. The um, now the rubber cement is comes with a really thick brush of its own that's already inside, and we're gonna paint it on and onto the paper. And this one requires time to dry, so we're gonna let it dry. Then we're gonna use a crayon to mark up a part of this paper, see what happens. And last, we're gonna use the art masking fluid. And this one doesn't come with a brush and it comes with a child safety cap. I would not use your nice brushes on here because it's really hard for that uh, masking fluid to be washed out of your brush. But we're gonna try it right now. I'm gonna put a brush in there and we're gonna um, put some masking fluid in a snaky formation and we're gonna wait. So all of these require us to wait just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're back. It's dry. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint over it. Okay, so we're back and notice that with the crayon, um, I'm there's nothing peelable. You can't peel anything off, but uh, basically it, it kept the area nice and clean. Um, with the masking fluid, it's meant for you to rub it off. So it's like this little rubber piece that comes off and in, it's stringy. And it actually is a really nice and clean look versus the crayon. And then uh, let's check out the Elmer, same thing. You're supposed to be able to just rub it off with your finger. Um, and I think it was kind of in between here, between these two, somewhat effective, but not entirely effective. Um, so I, I really like the masking fluid. So if you're able to use a brush and, um, you know, maybe not use your really good brush for it, you can use it, but it will give you a better result. And here is a perfect example why you might want to use masking fluid um, or block off some areas that won't take color. So what I did is before I started this painting, I went ahead and um, used the masking fluid over here for the moon. And then I wanted the reflection of the moon in the water. So I went ahead and put masking fluid here as well. So when I was done with the painting, all I did was pull out the masking fluid. And now I have these areas that are nice and empty and, and and devoid of color. I have another example here where I wanted it to look like it was snowing. So before I started my painting, I went ahead and put some dots all around. And, um, and then I wanted the top of the mountain to be white as well. So I went ahead and, and put the masking fluid there. I did the entire painting and once it dried, I went ahead and peeled off uh, the parts that um, had the masking fluid. Did you know that you can mix colors to make new colors? Let's go. Next, I'm gonna mix colors and make new colors. When we mix red and yellow, let's see what happens. I'm first going to wet the paper and I'm going to add a red over here. And I'm going to add a yellow to the other side. And the color in between is a new color. Now let's go to the next color. I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna wet the paper. And I'm going to add 
blue on one side and yellow on the other. And when they get together, they will make a new color. I'm trying to have it mix naturally. My table must be a little bit slanted. There. So mix those two colors together and in between you have a new color. Now let's try our last mix of primary colors is blue and red. Let's wet the paper so that the colors will mix together. Blue on one side. Perfect, and we're gonna put red on the other side. And then we're gonna bring them together in the center. And you will have purple. Um, with my purple, I usually add a little light in there so that you, you can see the purple. Um, I'm going to keep waxing it because I really want it to be purplish. I see it now. There's the purple. All right, so we have... Let's add our colors in there. Now, red, yellow, and blue are primary colors. The colors that are made in between are called secondary colors. And the secondary colors are orange, green, oops, and purple. Those are called secondary colors. Excellent. Did you know that watercolors are different than other kinds of paints because they're more translucent? What does that mean? Translucent just means that we're able to see through the color onto the paper. And, but there's ways to get around that. And that is by layering. If you layer your watercolors, you are gonna make the colors more and more opaque. And opaque just means a more solid color in which you cannot see through. So let's go explore that. Next, I'm going to add uh, different layers. This one will have one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers. And I wanna show you how, as you add the layers, your color is gonna get more and more opaque. And a really easy way to remember opaque is just um, that it's more and more solid and the fewer layers it has, the more and more translucent it will be. So we're looking our so we are looking at the results of our experiment where we put one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers of paint. And if you look at it closely, you'll notice that the more paint you put or the more layers you put, um, the more opaque your color becomes, which again is, is another word for um, solid and uh, less translucent. And um, so if you want it the least translucent, you're just gonna put one layer. When is this helpful in your painting? For example, here I put several layers. Uh, and when I say layers, I mean I'm add, add, lay, adding a layer and I let it dry. And then I add another layer and I let it dry. So for a layer to count, the layer actually has to dry. So here would be less um, sort of layers of the color and here would be a lot many more, maybe five layers here, maybe one or two here. Um, so those are helpful to know when you're making your own painting. Hey guys, my hope is that this video, The Science of Watercolors, has helped you figure out how you can use this wonderful tool to express yourselves better. Have fun!